Before we study this evening, shall we pray? Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for the salvation we have in and through the Lord Jesus Christ and how you've adopted us as your very own children and placed us here in this part of your church to worship and to serve you. We thank you for this time of worship where we dedicate David uh, in serving you as the uh, director of children's ministries. Lord, however you might choose to use him in this part of your church, may your good hand be upon him, may your presence be with him, and may he be aware that your love is always with him. Open our hearts and minds to this passage of Scripture, Father, as we would have understanding of what it means uh, to serve you and to serve your people. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. In this passage of Scripture, Paul is... Um, uh, telling everyone, particularly the, the elders there at Ephesus, how to continue the work. And whether we're ministering to adults, uh, youth, junior high, senior high, or children, the principles of ministry are the same. And as I was praying about the passage to use this evening, the Holy Spirit led me to Acts chapter 20. So let's go through these verses here and just glean from them uh, what it means for a minister to shepherd the flock of God. Hunter and David and I can be reminded of our responsibilities before the Lord in our service to Him. You all will be reminded of how you can pray for us as we serve the Lord in this part of His church so we can all be encouraged and gleaned from this passage. Let's begin, first of all, with um, verse 20 where Paul says, I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable in teaching you in public and from house to house. Paul taught everywhere he went. And this is the responsibility of a pastor. Wherever he goes, wherever he's with God's people, he should be prepared and ready and willing to give instruction uh, from the Word of God. In 21, testifying both to Jews, to Greeks, of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the gospel. We should always be willing and ready to give a reason for the hope that lies with us. And the only hope and the only way to have that is in Christ Jesus. Now, in 22, and now behold, I'm going to Jerusalem. Now, look at this next phrase. Constrained by the Spirit constrained. This is where Paul is saying, I have no other choice to make other than what the Holy Spirit is leading me to do. And this is what we uh, do in shepherding God's people. We should be constrained by the Holy Spirit, following the Spirit of God in our teaching, in our counseling, in our praying. Everything that the pastor does should be guided by the Holy Spirit. And that's what this word constrained here means. Being moved and guided by the Spirit of God. Not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and inflictions await me. This is where it says the Holy Spirit testifies. The verb to testify means to solemnly affirm to solemnly affirm. Over the years as being a pastor, uh, I have on many occasions said, God, if you still want me here, you gotta, you gotta show me. You gotta show me this is where you want me. And if not, then show me where you want me. And over all these years of being here, he's always confirmed this is where I want you. And this is what we need to always be looking to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit confirms us in our work, in our teaching, in our instruction, in our counseling, in our exhortation. This is so important that this affirmation comes from the Holy Spirit. And, and it also comes from brothers and sisters in Christ as we see them grow spiritually, as you testify to the pastors that, yes, I am being blessed. Yes, you are feeding me. That's very important. It's an affirmation that we're doing what the Lord wants us to do and where he wants us to do it. 
Now, let's look at um, verse 27. Go down to verse 27. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. This is a responsibility of pastors. Not to have a special theological viewpoint that that's all they teach. Not to get on a soapbox against social issues. But to teach the whole counsel of God. And when you are taught the entire counsel of God from both Old and New Testament, everything's covered. And so it's very important that we look at the Old and the New Testament, not just the New Testament, and not just the Gospels or the Epistles of Paul or the General Epistles or the Book of Revelation. We teach the whole New Testament, and then you go to the Old Testament, and, and we teach the entire Old Testament. And therefore, God in his whole counsel is presented. And this is what we would strive to do. Now, look at 28. And this is where it's so important uh, for pastors and congregations uh, to know exactly how the pastor is to conduct himself. In 28, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock. Notice he says, pay careful attention, first of all, to yourselves. The verb to pay careful attention to means to turn one's mind to someone. And this is so important that the pastor stays spiritually strong and focused on the Lord and not become focused on any one group of people within the congregation, lest he become a people pleaser. And so, first of all, he looks at his own heart. He lives before God as best as he can, like any other believer, being aware of his weaknesses, his sinful attitudes, and being uh, uh, convicted by the Spirit of God to confess that sin and repent and ask for forgiveness. He has to guard his heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. It's extremely important that the pastor be spiritually strong and spiritually growing in order to be able to feed the flock. So he turns his attention to himself. Secondly, to all the flock. Uh, the word all there is a very important word, and it means each member. Each member the one who is ministering in the name of Christ, who's been called of God to be his child, secondly, to serve as a pastor in the church, this individual must be mindful of every believer in that flock and to be aware of their spiritual needs and to pray for them and to encourage them and to build them up. So turning one's attention first to himself and then to the flock. Now, look at the next line in verse 28. In which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. In which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. God calls. God calls the person to be his child. Then God calls that man to serve him in a capacity of full-time service. That man has to be sure he is called of God and not just the congregation. The congregation affirms that call. The congregation nurtures that, uh, that brother in Christ, gives that brother opportunity to serve the Lord within the body and, and discerns whether the individual has those gifts or not. I met with David some months ago and and we talked about his own faith in Christ. I have no doubt about David's faith in Christ. Then I listened to his heart and his heart for children. I have never met anyone with the love of God for children as David has. Now, we as parents love our children. And, and we love them and we want them to come to know Christ. And we as members do the same thing. It's, I'm not saying we're slack in that as members and as parents or grandparents. 
But when God has called a man, God has a way of touching that man's heart and giving that man a heart for a special group of people. And that's what a call of God is. And that's what David has. So he's going to be focused on each of those children. He's placed by the Holy Spirit. I didn't hire him. Hunter didn't hire him. God brought him here. And so the Holy Spirit has him here to serve. And notice the next phrase here, because this is also important. The Holy Spirit has made you overseer. The, the verb there actually means the Holy Spirit has placed you here. Has placed him here. And this is what we all need to look at in our own lives. Is where has the Holy Spirit placed us to serve him? Not just the pastor's but the members, we're told in 1 Corinthians 12 that it's, it's Christ that builds the body. It's Christ that builds and brings people into the churches with various gifts and abilities. And those gifts are to be used for the common good of the people. And so the Holy Spirit has placed me here, Hunter here, and now David and the Holy Spirit has placed those of you who are members here. The Holy Spirit has placed you here and has given everyone a talent for the common good of all. So we pray for one another that we will do that. But the Holy Spirit has placed us here to worship and serve the Lord. What has he placed us here in spiritual leadership as overseers? Overseers. Not dictators, not rulers, but overseers. An overseer is the one who looks out for the welfare of someone else. It is our responsibility to look out for your spiritual welfare and for your well-being. To teach you the whole counsel of God. And see how the Holy Spirit uses that in everybody's life, including our own. So we're overseers. We, we love you all. We care for you. And we want to see you growing spiritually. And that's what the Holy Spirit has called us here to do. Now, let's look on in this. In verse 28. Look at the next phrase. To care for the church of God. To care for the church of God. The verb to care there means to shepherd. It's actually the word to shepherd a flock. So giving care means that, that we're to shepherd the flock. To shepherd the flock means we protect it. We feed it. When the flock is hurt, we are involved in the healing Whatever that, uh, that flock needs, we're responsible before God to see if that need is met. And in David's specialty, it'll be for the children. And so this is, this is very important that we all realize our part in this, that we give, as a shepherd cares for those sheep, gives loving care and concern for those sheep. Let's go on and look at this. Notice it says here to give care for the church of God. The church, the ecclesia, as the Greek is, means an assembly of people. And when you put it in the context of Scripture, it's an assembly of God's people. We are the, there is the ecclesia, but it's composed of believers around the world. We're part of that too. We're a particular ecclesia here in this particular place where God has put us. Now notice that prepositional phrase, of God. It doesn't say of the pastor. It doesn't say of the pastors. It belongs to God. Every one of us in this room this afternoon who trust in Jesus Christ as Savior, trust in Him alone for salvation, 
You and I belong to God. Nineteen sixty eight I joined the Air Force and I was in basic training. Been there three days, I guess, and I thought, Oh no, what have I done? They owned me four years. They can do anything they want to with me. They can send me anywhere, and they did. But you know, when I became a believer in Christ, I didn't have that fear. Peace, love, and joy, and the assurance of eternal life in Christ. We belong to Christ. We belong to God. All of us in Christ, that's who we belong to. And the privilege of, of being a part of the body of Christ and to be here and to be loved and shepherded by men who love the Lord. Notice also it says here, the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Which he obtained with his own blood. Now, the word obtain is a very interesting verb because that verb means to obtain for oneself. That's very special. We all go shopping, right? And sometimes we buy whatever we want for ourselves. I go to Lowe's. I have a hard time in Lowe's. I see a lot I want. Now, ladies, y'all probably go to clothing stores, okay? I understand that. The principle's the same. But look at this, what that word, that verb obtain means. It means the Lord wanted you, and he wanted you so much, he paid the ultimate price to purchase you his own crucifixion, suffering for your sin and mine on the cross, satisfying God's holy and just righteous wrath so we would never face that. And he shed his blood to cleanse us from all ungodliness and all kinds of sin. And he did that because he wanted to obtain you personally for himself. Whoa. Meditate on that for just a moment. How much love Christ has for you and for me. And that's beyond salvation. Then we get into sanctification, teaching the whole counsel of God so we can be the obedient, loving, caring children that he desires for us to be. He obtained us with his own blood. That's what it means to shepherd the flock of God. And that's how you pray for pastors as you know their responsibilities. Now I have one other verse of scripture that I pray <clears throat> quite often. And I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 20 and 21. 2 Timothy 2, 20 and 21. Now in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. I pray, Lord, make me a vessel fit for your use. And that's what we should all pray. That God would make us vessels of honor set apart for him 
could be used by him that he would be honored in our hearts. David, pray that every day. And you pray that for us as we pray that for you. And you know, when we think like this biblically and we pray like this biblically, our eyes are always on the Lord, always on Scripture, and rarely on self. And that's the biblical way of living. This is what God has given to his church to shepherd his people that they may grow spiritually, that they would be encouraged and we would encourage each other. Shall we pray? Oh, God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to study your word. We thank you for the instruction you've given to us as you've called us, Hunter and David and myself, to be pastors in this particular part of your church that you have purchased with your blood. And, Father, we're sinful, we're weak, and we depend on you and your grace and the Spirit of God living us to empower us to love you and to love your children and to serve you and to serve your children, that they would also be encouraged in their walk with you. So empower us by your spirit, Lord, that we would all be focused on you and you alone. I thank you for David, his call from you to be a child of yours, and may you use him mightily in this part of your church in serving you and serving this body. For this I ask in Jesus' name, amen. David, would you come up here, please? <clears throat> Those of you who are elders here at 3rd, if you'll come up. David, if you'll have a seat. Brothers, we are going to pray for David and his call uh, here to serve the Lord. So if we'll just surround him and place our hands on him and uh, begin our prayer time. Hunter, if you'll begin our prayer time and I'll close. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we bow together in this holy place for this holy purpose to dedicate your adopted son and servant, David Berg, to the holy use that we have heard from your holy scripture. Father, we do pray the message that we've heard over his life and ask, O oh God, that you would constrain him by your Holy Spirit, that he would daily be attentive to the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in his life, that he would pay attention, careful attention to himself that he would keep watch over his heart, that he would guard it from the many attacks of the enemy, placing the shield of faith over his own heart. And Father, would he continue to watch over those that you have entrusted into his care, these little ones whom you have said that they be not hindered, but that they come to you. O oh God, as they come to you, would they be brought by David Berg. Father, would you enable him to cleanse himself, to constantly put before him the truth of Paul's words to Timothy, that should a servant of God cleanse himself from that which makes him unclean, he will be ready and fit and holy, set aside to the use of his master. Father, we pray by the presence of the risen and reigning Lord Jesus that you would fulfill this Word of God in his life and in his ministry. Our Father, we bless your holy name and thank you for this evening to come to you in worship. Lord, we thank you for David Berg. We thank you for his life. We thank you, Father, for calling him to Third Presbyterian. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you have given him in ministering to, to children, especially. 
Lord, we pray that you would use him mightily here at their church. Lord, we pray that you would bring children into our assembly, Father. We may have the opportunity to share Christ with them. We may have the opportunity of leading many to Christ. That you would help them, Father, to grow in grace. Lord, we just thank you for blessing us with David and sending him our way. We pray for the protection of David, Lord, that you would shroud him with, with your Holy Spirit, Father, to protect him from the evil one. And Lord, that he would be a blessing to us here as he already has been, Father. And we thank you this in Jesus' name. Father, I just thank you for, for bringing David here, Father. Leading him here, dear Father. Father, as, as his family, his own family supports him, dear Father, as his church family has supported him so much, dear Father. And Father, just show the love to him, dear Jesus. Father, let the children that he shepherds, dear Father, see the love that he has for them, and Lord, just show that love back, Father. And give him that confidence, Father. Father, keep the evil one away from him always, dear Father, and keep him right on track with you, dear Jesus. Father, you just need him so much here to be in this church to, to uh, guide these children, dear Father, in the right way, dear Father. Father, just look at him and be with him. And Father, give him strength. I pray in his prayer. Father God, holy, holy, holy. We just thank you that we can come before you. We thank you for your gift to your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for all the many blessings and gifts you give us. We thank you for bringing David to this congregation. Father, we pray you direct his steps. We pray you direct his thoughts. Father, guide us as a congregation of how to surround David, how to love David unconditionally, how to serve David as he carries out your work, Lord. And Father, we ask in the name of my Savior, Jesus Christ, you put a protective hedge around David protect him from all physical, emotional, and all spiritual harm. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Thank you, dear Lord and Heavenly Father, for this time to gather around David and uh, set him apart as a special leader for these young people, Lord. Uh, Lord, we know that you brought him to us for the need that we have for these young people who are just coming into this world and have already several years old and we thank you lord for your grace in providing him in your time lord we know he has already shown how you are working in his life and in the lives of these young people that are here at third so we ask you lord special to be with him uh, be around him in a special way and protect him and guide him in every thought and every action that he does that he would constantly be looking for the leadership of the Holy Spirit in his life. Continue to be with him, Lord. Continue to be with this church as we see how you use him here at third. In Christ's name we pray. Heavenly Father, I <clears throat> thank you for the privilege of our family knowing David for the last 23 years and seeing him grow in your grace. For I know that he has a testimony that he can give the reason for the hope that lies within him to these mm -hmm. children that he'll be mm -hmm. ministering to. Father, help him to be a good listener to the kids, mm -hmm. to their parents, Lord, mm -hmm. and especially to a good listener to the Holy Spirit as he mm -hmm. leads and guides him. Mm -hmm. Father, be with him and give him a special measure of grace mm -hmm. each day in every situation because we know that your grace and your love overcomes worries and situations and happenings and fears and Lord we thank you for that we thank you for the privilege of the Holy Spirit and the privilege of prayer and we set him apart unto you in Jesus name Father in heaven I join my brothers in lifting David up to your throne of grace mm -hmm. praising you and thanking you for the salvation in his own heart and his walk with you as he is constrained by the Holy Spirit Thank you so much for bringing David here to be a part of this church and the ministry to the children. Oh, Father, I pray that you give him your wisdom, that you direct him by your Holy Spirit as he lives before the children a godly example and teaches from your holy word. 
Father, I pray that you will protect him from the evil one. And Lord, that you will enable him to live a life that's pleasing and honoring to you. Lord, thank you so much for David. Anoint him on high by your Holy Spirit. For it's in the name of our, your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. David, let us extend the right hand of fellowship.